I'm Jerry Miller. It's the I Love Seville Show. Thank you kindly for joining us live anywhere you get your social media content. We archive the show anywhere you get your content as well. Today's show, I am going to sit back and listen, um, and I think the show is going to be one that the community needs to hear. In studio today, Laura Fonner, the former owner of Siren Restaurant, former general manager Aaron McGowan in studio as well. Um, what we do today is necessary for um, documenting the digital trail. And I think that documentation of the digital trail, what we find online and on Google, is important. And it's important for accountability purposes, and it's also important for who you choose to partner with in future endeavors, and I'll leave it at that. Um, Judah Wickhauer is the director. If we could go to the studio camera and then the three shot and welcome Laura Fonner and Aaron McGowan to the program. Ladies, you guys are on screen. Thank you kindly for joining us today. Yep, yep. absolutely. Uh, thanks for even a platform for this. Absolutely. Right. Um, the show is yours, Laura. I will follow your lead. Where do you want to start? Okay. Uh, I'm, I'll start why I'm here. I'm here to uh, tell a story. Sharon still deserves an explanation of why Siren closed. Uh, I deserve to tell my story. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people are wondering why I am doing the Jerry Miller show because it's been really clear that we haven't been best friends. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. We don't agree on a lot of things, but there are times in, in moments in life where people help each other, and he's been nothing but an advocate for what's been going on since, since the user, and we all know what that was about. So uh, I chose to come on here today because it's the fastest way to get it up. We've already sat and done a tell-all with Seville, but it'll be two weeks before it comes out. Obviously, they need to check it with lawyers and stuff. Um, so it's just my fastest and most accurate way. Uh, I, don't, I didn't come here today to have a complete Hunter Smith bashing. It's like not the kind of person I am. Uh, if the story puts it and shines him in a negative light, that's because that is what he's shown himself as. Uh, I, I don't have to sit here and lie about anything or make anything up because honestly, if once you hear everything, right? Um, You'll, you'll be like, why would anybody ever make that up? It would make zero sense, and it was even worse li like living through it. Uh, I didn't come here for sympathy, right? Um, this, this kind of stuff needs to be talked about, because when we push it under the rug, because we know it happens all the time, especially in this town, and it's like smoke and mirrors, if we don't talk about it, how do we make other people aware that it could happen to them, right? Uh, it's, it's so unfair. I am, I am the working class, right? I, I, I put all of my hard-earned money into this and lost it all. And I'll, I'll take blame where I'll, I need to take blame, right? Maybe I wasn't loud enough when everybody, when I started yelling about what was happening. Maybe I didn't fight hard enough, but I sleep at night knowing that I did everything that I could do to keep it open for as long as I could. And Erin, it was a huge, huge part of that. And we wouldn't have made it this far if we, if she hadn't been here, right? Because uh, it sucks to live in misery, but as long as you have like a strong partner to do it with, it's so much more helpful. Um, so I understand why people were upset last night on social media about me coming on the show. I get it, but I mean, I thank you for the platform. Yeah, right. Absolutely. It's, uh, you you have a platform, and nobody can deny that. Thank right? you. As much shit as people want to talk about you. Yeah, right? yeah, and I I'm get it. I'm still sitting right here. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, talk to us about the closing. Okay, we'll go to like the last three weeks because Please. the story is really, really long. But I. To understand why I made the decisions, I mean, it's, it just takes the last three weeks. So everybody knows I took 100% of the company over from Hunter, right? Uh, I knew damn well what I was taking, and I built it, and I made it, and it was mine, and I took it. Uh, I knew a whole bunch about what was due, right? He put us in back rent almost $83,000. I knew that, right? I knew that I was going to have to clean that up. Right. Back rent of 83K? Yeah. yeah. How, how granted, many? granted they, right before we signed, Champion put twenty thousand dollars in towards that. Okay, still sixty-three right? is a massive nut. Absolutely. How many? They tried to evict us. Yep. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. How I many sat inside months and is eighty-three thousand? Me, uh, uh, enough. Eight, too seven, many. Eight, too many eight, didn't, for me to not have gotten a notice. Right. right. I'm a guarantee on the lease. Okay. I did not get a notice. I got a notice the first time it happened four months after we opened, but. We're, I'm trying to tell a sure. recent yes. story. So uh, we got a lien put on our business bank account from back taxes that weren't paid from, obviously, from 
before we took over, right? It emptied out our entire bank account. This is a little, almost three weeks ago, right? Uh, we tried really, really hard to recover, really hard because we had just gotten to a point after getting the loan to pay for all of the back rent and then having to uh, have the payment plans for the $23,000 in meals taxes that he never paid, right? And all of these things that we were already making payment plans for and, and within the vendors because you can't move forward without paying the people that you need items from. And I, I have a completely different philosophy of the way that they ran their business of not paying when you get the products, right? So we were essentially, we were already paying for two businesses and only income from one was coming in, but we were making it day by day, week by week. If a day by day goes to next week and then the next week is the next week, we make it to fall and we're okay again, right? Uh, we couldn't quite recover how we, it's the middle of July, right? There's, it's not all that busy. It's not a lot of business, but we are doing okay. Our staff is so loyal and we've, I've been so transparent this entire time. So they don't feel like they're blindsided by anything or they don't feel like, I don't think of them as a real human being and I'm gonna just fuck them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because that's not at all who I am. Um, so they were working with us. Our bank worked with us, right? They, uh, what bank does that? Right? right. Yeah. They had like faith in us. So uh, Monday, I had to meet with a, an, a potential investor or or a way to get to investors to try to save it. Right. I was going to do a, announce a one week break, summer break, because all the, a bunch of restaurants in town are doing it, and I thought I could kind of hide in the shadows, and do it, and then try to take that week to. Uh, get my hands on the funds that were needed to survive, right? Uh, but I made it really clear I had nothing, no promises of, of that this won't happen again, and I have nothing to offer you other than a failing business, right? But failing by not my hands. It was just impossible to recover, right? Uh, and so I told myself that I needed to define the difference between passion and reckless, and as soon as I got reckless, I needed to stop. Right, because I don't want to turn into what Hunter did because my pride got in the way and I couldn't say I, 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 it's time to stop. Right, so the investor left and there was hopes of getting what I needed. Right, uh, but I kept telling myself one more thing and then the mail came, and it was a uh, uh, almost nine thousand dollar bill for back taxes of unemployment from twenty one twenty two, and that was the the nail in the coffin. Right, I am responsible for all those things, right? And I knew that. And I, I knew that I have to file a lawsuit to get it back, but how, what am I, 213 in the number of lawsuits, right? When, that won't, that doesn't help me today. That doesn't help me tomorrow, not next week, not even in probably 10 years. Do you know what I mean? So I had to make the really, really disgusting decision, but it is for, I can't continue to ask people to work for me and not pay them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That is not how I run a business. That is not how, and, I, and I'm really, really thankful that I did the employees the way I did from day one and, and cared about them because they did, we're not, a, nobody's upset. But I gave them the notice I had for closing, right? How irresponsible would I be to sit here three weeks from now doing the same thing knowing I had racked up all of that extra and not, knew I wasn't gonna be able to pay it, you know? I had no, really no other decision in my head. This it, because if that's one more thing, what's next and what's next? And, and I, and I Obviously, now this sounds like I'm being naive, and I haven't done my due diligence and tried to find out what's missing and what, what is going to come at me as far as liens and all of the financial issues that he caused. It's almost impossible. The, there were five different accountants the time I worked there, right? There, there are closed bank accounts. I know you can get back into them. I, trust me, guys. I, I have a lawyer. I have not done any of this alone. I have, I have approved everything I've done, social media-wise, everything with him, and I'm not doing anything wrong because I am not lying, right? I'm telling a story that happened, and, and, and I'm telling things that people don't want to talk about, right? This is hard to talk about, right? Uh, I just, we couldn't, we had to be smart, right? I get so sidetracked because there's so much I need to talk You're about. You're doing a great job. You're doing yeah. a great job. What is the, uh, and Aaron, I'll, I'll weave you in here, um, in a moment, what is that you know of today, the total financial exposure because of this financial negligence? It sounds like it's hundreds of thousands of dollars. For me personally or for Champion? For, well, for, for Siren, say for Siren. For Siren. We did a really, really good job and worked very hard to pay off everybody that hadn't been paid uh -huh. when um, we were given control of the bank account and the accounting stuff. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and we did that. We paid ev almost everybody off. There were still a few vendors that we did not pay off completely. But um, as a whole, I mean, we started, what, almost 20, well, probably not that much, maybe 10 grand in debt to like two vendors at the time. But we, they put us on a pay. We agreed to do a payment plan. Sure. And we, you know, and we did what we had to do. It should have been done in the first place. Uh -huh. And so they knew, at least the vendors knew that. The vendors have always known that, though. I've worked with a bunch of these people for my entire career. Right. Right. Uh, I, I, they put us in a place last summer, right, last summer, where we got cut off from yeah. my main source of seafood, someone I've worked with for 25 years. Mm -hmm. Absolutely embarrassing, right? Yeah. And they're like, just vendor hop. I'm like, I'm not a vendor hopper, and these are my friends. Yeah. Right? So I went off-site and did an off-site job to make sure that he got paid, right? I, I made a promise, and I made good on it, and that's why my staff and my vendors will continue to support me throughout this, right? Like, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a sleaze bag. Well, like and I, I think people I also... I fight for the working class, right. right, you know? And they realize it, it was not you. Right. right. She was never given a chance to succeed or fail. Yeah. I, she wasn't I, given a chance to see what would happen. Yeah, at this point... She failed from the moment I, I've opened. finally come to terms with the fact that it, I, I, I didn't see it a chance since day one. You know what I mean? Uh, and I'm scrappy, and sh so she and we're fighters, and that's how we're open. We were open until we were. You know what I mean? But I, I never stood a chance. Someone asked me in an interview the other day, uh, two two decent questions. It was, uh, what did he take from you, and what did he give give you? Right? Uh, he took the opportunity for me to figure out if I was going to fail by myself. I'll never know because I failed, and it was not in my solo hands. Right? Uh, what he gave to me was opportunity to see what bankruptcy is like. Right? Uh, maybe I'll be able to return the favor one day. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll see. But I mean, there, there's not a lot of positives that came out of it. You know, I had someone close to him, and I'm not going to do the name naming thing because I'm not here. Like, I'm just here to tell my story. I'm not here to be shit talking all over people in town. Yeah. They, they, they have to sleep at night with themselves. Sure, sure. Right? Um, a lot of people giving you props. Julian Freeman, we love you, Laura. Mariah Doyle, I was a vendor. Big thanks for your support, yeah. you too. And these ladies always made sure I got paid. Andrew Litter, Little saying I love you, Laura. Um, the Siren Page, um, you got Penny Johnson Marshall, Stephanie Keller, you got Racine Allen, Charlotte Runyon, um, a handful of media outlets watching you on the program right now. Six states that I can see on the program. The Cheers, Virginia Page just yeah. shared the show. Bo Stockton, who we both know, mm -hmm. says thank you for bringing this to light. Laura does not deserve this. She is simply put a badass lady. I can't wait to see what she does next. Johnny Ornalis is sharing the show. Uh, put into perspective the sweat equity. Oh, uh, this is good. Yeah. I need to clear this up with you as well. Please, please. In, in your Facebook post that I'm coming on here, you uh -huh. said I was the sweat equity of the restaurant. I uh -huh. was, but I was also all of the money. Yeah, yeah. Right? Right. And there's something to be said for that. Yeah, put, the, I mean? put this in like perspective. Is, yeah. Like yeah. financial that you've put into the restaurant yeah. and effort. I mean, I remember watching you because you, you are, have a, so many skills. And Thank one you. of the skills Thank that you have is you understand how to, um, you know, show effort on social media mm -hmm. that helps kind of bring the brand to life. Okay. So I was watching like, I was watching you tell the story of, of Siren the brand mm -hmm. from start to opening as well as any yeah. advertising agency could ever do it. And this is what I do for a living. Like you, you did it Thank better you. than I could have done Thank it. Thank you. Um, so it's a personal, that I've exactly. my feelings. Right. I, I do life with my feelings. Right, right, right. And you wear your feelings on your sleeve I like, like I do. Okay, so you, she was in there and I'll pass it to you. When you were launching the business, this is what I'm doing with the floors. This is what mm -hmm. I'm doing with the bar. Yeah. Put the effort into play, yeah. into perspective. I, I, it's heartbreaking that I'm, that I'm walking away from it, right? Uh, I had to realize that I've spent so much time. I filed for divorce the same time I signed the lease. I did that to myself. I'm the type of person, I, uh, amicable divorce. Josh, you're a really nice person and <laughs> really good father. I'm not trying to get you in trouble here. They're, everybody thought he was you, sir. My ex-husband was not you, sir. He's a lovely man. <laughs> But we, we were just done being married. So I knew what I was getting myself into, right? I'm not naive. I'm a grown-ass woman. Uh, my parents helped me renovate, renovate that place. We ripped the walls down. We redid all the floors. I learned how to be a carpenter, an electrician, a very poor one, but one. Um, a, a, a plumber. I mean, like, everything. I did everything. I regretted all the kitchen floors, and I learned with Clay, my friend Clay from Rapid Repair, how to redo gas lines and 
and put in whole stainless steel walls and kitchens. Like I, that was my blood, sweat, and tears, and, and what I needed in that moment in life was my safe space because I was just leaving my career and then just leaving my husband, right? And I built what I needed to feel safe, right? And Hunter has had the ability to take that away from feeling like a safe spot, right? It's like tainted with lies. Do you know what I mean? You, I can say lies, but then he'll probably disagree with that, right? Uh, and maybe it's not a lie, and maybe he was just so naive about everything and not in control of his company that he didn't realize this was happening, and that makes him an even worse businessman, right? Not, not one that should, we should feel sorry for because, oh, he didn't know. It's his fucking job to pay attention, mm -hmm. right? That is what his partner, my, my partnership with him was. He was 51, I was 49. I did all the money, all the work. I could accept that knowing that I knew what I was doing. As long as they were doing what they were supposed to do, then we would be fine and I would suck that up and it'd be fine. It's a fucking pandemic, right? right? Who right. opens the restaurant in December during a pandemic? I do, because I know that I have faith in myself, that I know what I'm doing. And, and he's had the ability to, to I didn't take my, he's not taking my faith away or anything like that away, right? Uh, I'm beautifully angry right now. There's like a, this, common sense of rage inside of me that isn't violent, right? <laughs> uh, but it's clarifying, right? Uh, and this is why I'm here to talk about this, because it's like so hard for people to talk about failure, right? But if you don't fail, you don't have anything to define success with, right? Uh, and I'm not counting this as a failure. I'm counting this as a situation in life where I'm taking a huge, huge lesson from it, right? And it gives me more drive and more motivation to do something even bigger and better next, right? What that is, I don't have any idea. I'm literally just trying to breathe right now because it is, this is all happening in real life, right? We haven't even done our final benefit blowout for the bar yet. Like, it's still stuff that needs to be handled, but I'm just breathing, right? So I don't, I don't know next steps. I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure. All I know is that I'm about to relive this entire last two years over and over and over and over again. Uh, not only through like uh, uh, legal things, but just in the public because it's this is a conversation piece, right? There are so many people in this town that have been screwed so hard, right? It wasn't one, wasn't one business. It was an entire company with entire individual businesses that, and hundreds of people whose life just got screwed from one person, right? And, and people continue to ask me, well, what about the accountants or what about this? First of all, they were not contracted out, right? They were champion employees, which means at the end of the day, Hunter was responsible for what they were doing. If he was putting people into positions that they were not qualified for and not overseeing what was happening, that is his negligence, right? That is what his portion of my partnership was. Uh, marketing, accounting, right? All of, all of that stuff. They already had it lined up. And who was I? Uh, I'll address this too as well because uh, I've heard this a few times now. Well, she knew what she was getting into because we all knew who he was. That's an absolute hell no, I didn't. And I'll tell you why. Because I spent 17 years out in Dooners. And I'll right? tell you this. Mike Valente says we're watching you from Dooners. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like, Fantastic. Um, he Hi says... Guys. <laughs> go, 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 I mean, I, the comments yeah. are coming in so fast. Go yeah. ahead, go ahead. But I was out there 17 years. Worked in Ivy, lived in Crozet. I knew everybody's names, but I didn't know shit about people. I stay in my own lane, right? Like, I, and, and you know what I mean? I, 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 don't, I don't know all these people personally. And if nobody talked about it before, right, what was happening, then how am I supposed to know? Nobody warned me when I started. I'm not mad at those people, right? I am I'm mad that it's taken this long and gotten this far where, uh, and where here I am sitting here just losing everything, right? And having to talk about it because it's, and it's something that should have been talked about years ago, right? Uh, I understand how terrifying it is to sit and have, tell stories like this and oh my gosh, what if I get sued for defamation? If what comes out of my mouth is the worst he's ever heard and he picks me to be sued, great birthday present, do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm, I already lost everything, you know, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm the one that was over there picking his pieces up of what he did to my business, right? I mean, he was in there maybe four times in the entire time the whole place was open, and one in particular was for me to invite him over to yell at him, right? So it wasn't by choice. Uh, he did the company so wrong with his negligence that it's uh, uh, unbelievable. I started yelling about it. We opened in the December 21, and then I started yelling about it like in March of 22 when we got the first notice that we were $43,000 behind in rent. 90,000 or 90 days later? 
That's when no, you but I took the lease over in like August or something, and we okay. did the renovation. Okay. Right. So there's like a couple months there we're waiting for HVAC, but they were all months that counted at some point. Right, right, Correct? right. I know you're trying to do the math on how much my rent is. Well, no, I'm just trying to figure <laughs> out. So, so you knew, you knew, you figured out in March. So essentially, 90 yes. days after you opened, mm -hmm. like had the grand opening of the restaurant. Yep. Mm -hmm. I got notified via email, which was what I should have been because I was I'm a guarantor on the lease. Right. right. Jesus. Right. So I started screaming then. Right? Okay. Uh, we all started, I started getting very suspicious with things that were going on. Nobody came to pick the mail up. I'd open the mail, right? Be disconnect notifications. We've gotten our power cut off. We got our gas shut off twice. Uh, you know what I mean? Like some really significant things. And so I would open up a disconnect letter and immediately call, call him. And his best advice to me was I would have less problems if I quit opening the mail. What? And my response is somebody's got to open the fucking mail. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, I, he might be pissed because he might not. Re I really hope he's watching this, but I, he might not remember all the dumb shit that he said. But I do. Yeah. He said what yeah. about the mail? If Don't you would have it. less problems if you quit opening the mail. That I'm. But yeah. I can't read the mail in the dark. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Well, no, out. I can't read it in the dark. We open the mail to pay the bills. Right. Yeah. And he's supposed yeah. to be paying the bills. Yeah. Right. Uh, we lost our health insurance at one point. Uh, some probably within the first six months of being open, I was sitting outside and a nice gentleman came walking up and told me we didn't have our business license. Yeah. And so I got on the phone and within two hours we had our business license. That pissed me off. Not only because how negligent that was, right? But how it only took two fucking hours. Yeah. Right. 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 Uh, we got our workers' comp taken away and it's illegal to continue to be open without uh, having workers comp insurance mm -hmm. and we had an injured employee in the time that we took and the reason why we found out that we did not have it is because I needed the the workers comp number to, for the claim for her and then I advised her to sue us right because uh, maybe that'd be a wonderful lesson for him to learn and I'm willing to go down with that because I didn't do anything wrong but I will protect my employee because she definitely didn't do anything wrong right and it was not her fault that I that the company didn't have it right uh, I lost my insurance too. Okay, so it's. You know, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, we we lost. That's what he said to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've lost a lot, right? Uh, a lot of, a lot of things throughout the and 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 this said was all during the process of me trying to take over. Yeah. Right, but I was not. I'm not just going to agree to any terms. Right. Right. I opened the place with my sweat equity and my money in my two hands. And I wanted it back how I gave it to him, right? So I was being stubborn, which I should have, because that's I, I, I deserve what I deserve, right? Yeah. Uh, but it was it's not it, 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 I didn't, right? I got it back, but it was not that. And then at one point, and this is before he became aware of all of the the money that had been moved out of accounts and this and that, and I don't even know where I'm going. I'm getting so angry. <laughs> I am. I'm, I'm, this is like fur furious to talk about, right? Yeah. Um, we wanted me to pay him sixty-five thousand dollars to to buy him out, and yeah. I wasn't comfortable with that, what? right? Uh, but that changed very quickly, right? I'm not going to dwell on that because that was like a, 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 a first initial meeting about splitting ways. Before before I said, well, I'm not going to do anything until we have an accountant really break this down. I have no idea what we owe because you have no idea what we owe. And I'm not willing to do anything until we figure that out. Because then you would take on that debt yourself because then you would be the owner of the business. Right. Without, but without any knowledge. And to think about it, if I had done, I have, I have not waited as long as I did, right, and known about the back rent and known about all this other stuff and all of these been surprises all at once, right, instead of these last two being the two staggering ones that took me down, right, like that's, that, that would have been insane. Yeah. Probably would have just stroked out. You know what I mean? That's so. After he said, "I won sixty-five k to buy me out," I said, "I'm going to have to speak with my lawyer." Right. And then that was the last of that kind of conversation. And then I would imagine the conversation yeah. just went to buy me out for a dollar, mm. for the sake of me getting off some of this exposure. Right. Is that a fair read? Buy no, me out. No, he, he was going to he he was going to give it to me. Okay. Right. Because he didn't want but, that exposure. You were going to take on the debt. But with all of the with all of the everything. Right. The way that I have it laid out, right, and I'm allowed to talk about this because it's, it's a legal document and we have my lawyers who discussed everything. Um, I, he's still on the line for any debt that was created before he signed it over to me, but I have to sue him for it. Right. Right. 
Uh, but it, here I am, like $130,000 into the debt that we knew about, not thinking that there could be much that much more, right? right? And we've already been in t contact with most of the people that were like debt collectors, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, it's just a, a, amazing the negligence and the lack of being able to manage your own business. And, I've thought a lot about this. Uh, he had these businesses way before I met, I became part of Champion, right? Why would, it, why would I think that they weren't being run correctly if they'd been around for that long, right? Wouldn't, I, would, I would assume I would have seen a red flag or something, do you know what I mean? Well, no, like I could even offer some perspective on that. Um, and people shared a photo that where Hunter came on our show. Yeah, that was um, cool. That was in the beginning, that was before COVID. Yeah. And before COVID, even going into COVID, even in the middle of COVID, we were all saying like, this guy's growing the empire. On yeah. paper, it looked like the Midas touch, right. like nothing could right. go wrong. Yeah. What we did well, not- Well, he had a great lineup of, of people with great resumes. Right, yeah. and he also had family financing yeah. Yeah. that was helping the uh, expansion. Right. That family financing yeah. has since been cut off, we know of, and then the proverbial house of cards starts to crumble which is what's happening here. Let's weave Aaron into the mix. Yes. Rachel Pennington is giving you props. Chef Jabari Wallington is watching the show, giving you props. Kennedy Johnson, Wilson Foster. Um, Gabrielle over at uh, Mission Barbecue is watching. Vision. Uh, or, uh, excuse me, Vision yeah. Barbecue. I apologize yep. for that slip. Vision Barbecue is fantastic. It's in the Vinegar Hill Shopping Center. Vision Barbecue is fantastic food. Bill McChesney, Patty Zeller, giving you some props. Jenny Burkham, giving you props over there. Cynthia Nitchell, Summer Leary. I mean, I can't even get to the comments here. Aaron, anywhere you want to go. The show is, you got a lot of folks here. I know, it's, it's Laura's story though. Um, yeah, so you're I'm a huge, trying to let her take the lead. It. Absolutely. Um, I mean, you know, I'm not sure where to start it uh when did you start realizing seeing that so it was july 2022 um i had taken a week's vacation so delightful came back to work and um i was trying to i was either picking up an order of some kind anyway credit card or our debit card was declined i'm like that can't be right you know how would it be declined it's not a huge number Tried it again, didn't work, so went back, made some phone calls, and found out that, oh yeah, by the way, there's not any money in your bank account. And I'm like, my involvement at that time, um, I really had nothing to do with the accounting stuff. I didn't have anything to do with the bookkeeping. Um, I had access to the bank card and the checks and told them when we did stuff. There was never a budget, which uh -huh. I thought was a little strange, but not my business. Um, but just knowing the numbers that I knew, I knew that there was no reason we should be broke. And then it started with the mm -hmm. vendors saying, you know what, we can't work with you anymore because there's, you have to pay first and we can't, you know. It wasn't all ours, it was, it was champion as a whole. Yeah. Um, it fixed itself a little bit. We didn't have, I won't say it fixed itself. Uh, we didn't have as many problems for a little while after that, like it seemed to kind of come back up. And then, he, Hunter really wanted out pretty quickly and really thought that Laura was going to just say yes to the 65 grand to buy him out. Um, he moved very quickly to give me access to the bank account and turn everything over to her without any paperwork being done. So he was still a full you know, person. Well, that gave us, we, I took over that December 1st and when we took the bank account over, it was negative 10 grand. Um, Jesus. Well, they basically, basically, we did it up to the beginning of December. We were, we were made uh, aware that we were, we were on our own December 1st. Yeah. Uh, bookkeeping, everything, on yeah. our own. Right? So she luckily has accounting background, right? And then so she became the bookkeeper, right? And we went and got a, 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 an accountant to separate us from them. But 51%, 49 still, the entire time, and we just got dropped. Our emails got taken away. Yeah. They told us they were taking them, but make sure you save everything you want. But what, what are you gonna yeah. take our emails away if you're still partnering this? Right, right, right. Right, like I'm not, you can't just pretend like it's not here still. Right. Right, we didn't, we didn't agree to anything, we didn't sign anything, we haven't done anything legally, and you're still 51%, right? And it was, what, two days before Christmas, before the accountant let us know that we were that far behind in rent? Yes. 
It's like, oh, 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 yeah, yeah. But it was the, it was perfect because that's what allowed us to get in and figure out what had happened. Yeah. So it was kudos to him for letting me in early. Yeah, we we can't sit here and say that there there was. Uh, I'm not going to legally say and officially say there was embezzlement, right? I know that that has been thrown around a well, lot. Well, can right? I ask this question? Like, what yes, if if Siren is a badass restaurant that serves fantastic food? at a good price and is popular and has customers, what was happening to the revenue that well, Siren was making? Here's everybody wants to know. Everybody that's been burned by him, where's the money, right? We have no idea where the money was. Well, what I do know is that they're, you know, in a normal uh, uh, partnership with a restaurant in, in a, a restaurant group, right? Each LLC has its own bank account. Right. right? And then you, in the only reasonable other account to transfer money to from there, from mine, to theirs is the CHG, right? Not other individual restaurants or other things, right? There, it, it is to everyone, every single one from the coffee shop to, uh, you know, the in and out and in and out and to other accounts. It, and there's the book keep, record keeping and bookkeeping wasn't well done, right? There wasn't, I, at one point I wasn't even allowed to speak to the, to the accountant because he was scared of me. And it was only because I told him he was playing with real people's money and that if he didn't know how to do his job, he needed to ask someone for help because it is affecting everybody involved. And it wasn't fair that he got put into that position when he did because he was not qualified. And honestly, nobody would have been qualified for a job like that because nobody was transparent about what you were walking into, right? And then you sit you down and here's your shit show and try to decipher anything from that, right? You're not gonna find anything. You're just gonna look at it and be like, what and who and how So, and so the, the money from the accounts were going to all the other business accounts as well? There were transfers in and out. Yeah. Um, Mostly out, unfortunately, but out of Siren's bank account into uh, Paper Canoe, Brasserie, um, yeah. even I think Ice House at one point. Yeah. I mean, and it was. There was one to the coffee shop. Yeah. Right? There yeah. Was, um, Loose Brew on High Street. Yeah. Yep. Uh, um, the which he at one time was trying to sell for $1. Yeah. Um, and why he was trying to sell for $1 was the, uh, the least exposure the lease exposure on that business mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and minimizing that lease exposure. Yeah. Know the owner of that location. Um, so keep, keep going. Oh, I'll yeah. stop. So, yeah. um, it, you know, started kind of discovery on our own just to, fit, like I said, figure out what happened. where Because it shouldn't have been where it was. Um, start, noticed the, trans the transfers back and forth. Um, when I asked Hunter about it, his first answer was that that was the payments for uh, the 51% or whatever Champion Hospitality was supposed to be doing for us that wasn't getting done. That was the money um, to pay Champion for right. being our partner. Um, but there were, I think one of the transfers in and out was 70 grand. There was, you know, little ones, there were big ones, and then there was a big discrepancy of what went out versus what came back in. And so that's what I was questioning. And, um, well, mostly what I was questioning. And, um, yeah, that was his answer. He was like, I'm not really sure. Uh, I think it was, you know, that's what we agreed to. About 50 grand. I mean, that doesn't make a lot of sense when you're a 51% owner. Why are, what, what is happening right now? Um, found all those. We found, um, or I found some certified checks that he had approved to pay other employees at other restaurants. From Sirens? From yeah. Sirens bank account. Yeah. And it says on there per Hunter Smith, you know. Yeah. Um, and then then we start finding out $80,000 in rent. We've got this $20,000 in meals yeah. tax that didn't get paid, but we're on a payment plan for that. Um, with the city? With the city. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They were, they've been yeah. that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, at one point, I emailed Hunter and I'm like, we I don't, I don't remember at the time what we had just received. It was a bill of some sort. But it, I emailed him and I said, look, I need to know what else is out there. Like, this can't, I keep getting these giant bills that we had no idea existed. Please tell me what else is out there. And he was like, well, I, I just, I'm not sure. Mail was going to his personal residence. It was going to the Reason tap room. Yeah. It was going, there... It, None of the bills were coming to, well, very few of the bills were coming yeah. to Siren. Most of them were going out to all these different places, so which made it even harder to figure out what we owed or, you know. So it just... They didn't officially have a master list of vendors and things like that, like, like a normal business person would, right. until the shit hit the fan. Yeah. Right? 
Because, I mean, how easy would it be, have been in, in March or whatever when the first $43,000 behind the rent it would, would it have been to be able to go down the list of each vendor and check and see if there was the same problem? Right. Mm -hmm. Sure. And I yelled and I yelled and I yelled and I said, "There's a first damn thing that we should have done, and you should have done as your side, right? If you, you even if you don't have a list, create one and do it now, mm -hmm. right? The negligence and just not doing that or not thinking that that would be a beneficial thing to do is just like dumbfounding to me. I don't, I don't understand how someone that prides himself on being such an entrepreneur in Charlottesville doesn't know the basics of business, yeah. right? Uh, he's always thought he was smarter than me, but it turns out that street smarts really adds up way more than whatever he's got, right? Like was it was it intentional, um, intentional ignorance, or intentionally? I can't tell you. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, that's the yeah. question. I mean, yeah. I, I he I can't, he has I, not accepted any responsibility for any of it. Um, he he sat me down and apologized to me when he wanted to offer me to take the restaurant, right? Uh, I wanted, I, you know, you guys all know, I'm like a softy. I'll give everybody a chance, and if they screw me, then there's your chance. Right? Yeah, yeah. 80% uh, uh, of the times, I get screwed, and here's one of them. But that 20%, like how Charlotte was re reacting to this and wrapping their arms around me and supporting me right now, that 20% makes up for that 80, right? So I, I, I walked into that, in that apology, and, and then my mind was made up that, Actions speak louder than words, and from that day, you need to figure out how to make good. And it just went down instead of going up, right? And so then that apology was that, uh, null and voided, right? That, it meant nothing because his actions didn't speak to what he had just said. But he's sorry that he's, uh, he's affected by it, yeah. right? Like, uh, we're all affected by it, yeah. right? All, all of us. Hundreds of people yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. affected by this. Yeah. Um, put, in, put in perspective the the uh, array of emotions that you've had over the last 48 hours who i just told her this morning we live together too so right. i just told her this morning that every day feels different like it, it different right i have so much that needs to happen with this bankruptcy and the closing of a business and cleaning up the actual physical thing and having the last fundraiser for it and whatnot that uh, i don't even know what to do right i'm not i made a real nice dinner at home last night with things that people gave us like with some forged mushrooms and stuff right uh, -huh. uh only because i don't know what to do with my hands i'm not used to sitting like this and 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 there's lawyer advice take the weekend yeah. right this will still be here monday right uh because i think i need a second to really let it all sit in uh i've been everything from uh full of rage uh to completely lost right uh, not not at all embarrassed, right? I didn't. I know I can sit here and tell you 100% that I I fought to the last day for that place, right? Uh, the sympathy, sorry that he had on whatever social media last night, right? The difference between him and I with the failing thing is he laid down and didn't fight to survive. He let it all fall on top of him because it seemed so overwhelming, right? I went down because I fell with it. Right, because I fought for it. Because I fight, fighting the good fight. Right, I thought that maybe this would be a beautiful story about uh, overcoming uh, a redemption story. Right. Yeah. But, but it is in a way. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I have to take this with uh, with eyes wide open and, and and knowing that life happens for a reason, and and sometimes being the example for something so negative and so that it could affect you know, affects my entire life. Right. I have three children. Right. Yeah. Um, I have to do it in such a graceful way because then it empowers other people to try to do it the same way. Do you know what I mean? But he never, he, he, he just laid down and, and let it fall on him. He, he had every opportunity, especially when John Cross came into the picture, to be able to fight to survive, and he chose not to, and John has said that personally. Tell, tell us about John coming into the picture. Give us the flip book of that. Mm -hmm. All right, I know that everybody is upset with him because they don't understand what happened. Right, and I watched the show where everybody bashed him, or kind of like about not being able. I'm not speaking to this. Yeah, I have my own personal interaction with John Cross. And explain right. who he is. I, yeah, well, he's who bought Champion. Yeah, right. He is the angel investor that came from New York that everybody's talking about. Right, uh, tried to take over, wanted the brand. Right, he's not a restaurant guy. Yeah, right. Very nice person though. Yeah. Uh, I believe every employee in Champion before John came on, because I got a text message from Hunter one day saying, I think we have a solution for the money aspect to this problem. And I was like, okay, I'll entertain any idea right now. Sure. Right? We weren't like head to head yet. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, 
And he's like, there's an angel investor from New York, right? I would like for you to sit with him. So he came and he, you know, typical New Yorker, right? Uh, I had no problem with it. He was very kind. Said his wife was a big fan of mine from his grocery games, right? Uh, did a walk through the restaurant and that was it. And it didn't sit well with me. So I'm like, who is he? He was described to the entire company as a million dollar man that was going to come in and save us all. He was going to buy the company and invest in it and fix everything, okay. right? But that didn't sit with, well with me either. Uh, I looked him up because I always, I like Nancy Drew over here, you know what I mean? And found that his last big public investment was for um, a hemp farm for medical marijuana research. Great. It's probably yeah. how those two got together, right? Yeah. Uh, but nothing to do with restaurants of any sort. So I sent him an email at like 6 o'clock one morning, and he lives in another state, and I said, I'd like to sit down with you face to face and ask you a few things. Sure. Right? So he drove here in his pajamas, his wife sat in a chair in our dining room with headphones on, and I asked him if he was my 51%. And I asked him if he'd ever done restaurants before, and he said no, and I said, why would you want to start now? With this, right? Uh, are you here to save us? Right? I cried for probably two hours telling the entire side of the story that he hadn't heard it. I told him that he was considered the million dollar man and everybody thought that he was coming in to save everybody. And he had no idea that that's what everybody thought. No clue. He was there to come in and save the brand and do some kind of beer stuff, right? Because he's made it pretty clear beer is his focus, yeah. right? Uh, he, he is part of the reason I got out before it all fell. He was an advocate for me, right? Uh, you, sir, uh, someone called me a woman scorned. I'm a fucking partner scorned, right? It doesn't matter if I'm a woman or a man. I'm just brave enough and loud enough to talk about it, Yeah. right? Uh, he yelled at him, right? Uh, he's got three, John Cross has three daughters, and uh, the first day we sat down together, he told me that I reminded him about how feisty and, and scrappy his wife is, and he was so sorry this is happening, right? To good people. And yeah. the more he got to know us, the more he personalized with the actual staff, right? So I can't speak to how it ended up that he couldn't pay them, and I'm not defending that he didn't, right? Because I, my philosophy with what's happened over there is completely pay my staff, yeah. right? I am defending the fact that at one point when Hunter put us behind so far that we couldn't pay our payroll, he took $3,000 out of his personal bank account and finished it for us. Yeah. He got me out of the deal right before the empire, entire empire crumbled, yeah. right? Like, he, he's done nothing but good things for me, and I have nothing but good things to say about him. And I told him the other week that I was so sorry that he was never even given the opportunity in Charlottesville to do things right and do things how I know he wanted to. Was he one of the pictures on yes. the Brasserie Saison storefront? Yeah. What, who? I don't you, know who, who was behind that. You know? Yeah. I have no idea. That mattered to me. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I, so I can't, I mean, he, he, he did me right. Yeah. Right? And, and I can only imagine that in some form or fashion when you get to a certain level of debt and amount that you're realizing is owed and how many times you've been lied to, you've got to put a stop to something. So do you think, right? do you think um, even John Cross, this guy who's essentially, what, a uh, private equity guy? Uh, yeah. Do you think he was uh, misled? Being yeah. 100%. Okay. Absolutely. Right. 100%. And okay. he's, he's admitted it. Yeah. So he was where, misled to the where, point of the debt that was out there? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. This is where that uh, he laid down and didn't fight for himself came from. Because John helped me because I was fighting for myself. But then he said he was just laying down and he's not even willing to save himself. Yeah. Right? But he's been, and I'm like, so you're going to do it for him? Right? Like, uh, you know, I just want out. All I want is out. And if this is my form and my means, right? Mm -hmm. Then he helped me get out right when I did. Yeah. And I knew what I was taking on. We knew what we were taking on. Yeah. Right? She's not, doesn't have, she's not like part of the owner or anything, but we were going to work it that way if we'd survived. Right? Yeah. She's my ride or die, and wherever I go next, she's with me, right? It's like uh -huh. a little duo, a little package. I, got a I couple, like it. I've got a couple more, too. I like it. <laughs> I she, have a whole staff. You have some you wanted to jump in with, I could tell? If, if I, not... She distracted me. Okay. <laughs> totally got it. In my beauty. I, I totally get it. Um, I'll, I'll throw this to you. This is on LinkedIn. Like, people are sharing this with oh, me. Oh, championship beverages? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He... You know, in, in I'll give this to you because I had some, but I did this in the other interview, but I'm not sure it'll come out. Um, I, I received a message from someone really close to Hunter, and he told me that I, maybe I needed to uh, think of things in a different perspective. Perhaps I should thank him for getting me into the business. Perhaps I should thank him for negotiating a lease, or Siren might not have been created. Uh, perhaps I should also thank him for getting out when he did. Right? I've been in the business before he was a brewer, right? not as an owner, but as a significant part of the restaurant community, and, and, and it's well known. 
right? He didn't get me into the business. He was not the only person I could have partnered with. It was my misfortunate mistake, unfortunate mistake to have partnered with him, but that was my choice, right? Um, I mean, you were going to take over Dooners if it wasn't for COVID, right? Yeah. In a yeah, lot of ways, absolutely. she yeah. would have been the owner of Dooners mm -hmm. if it wasn't for the pandemic. Absolutely. Yeah, I couldn't guarantee that that was going to be around on the other side. I couldn't. That said, in the middle of nowhere, it's a fine dining and fine dining institution, right? I know that the community, local community, would support it, but it's real pricey for the rest of us. You know? Um, yeah, no, he wasn't the only one I could have partnered with. Uh, he said the right words because he's a hell of a salesman, right? Uh, thank him for negotiating the lease. Well, you never paid it, right? right? So thanks for that, right? And then thanks for getting out when you did. He, he didn't want to, he, no, it he wasn't his terms, yeah. right? So all of that is just so insane to me that someone would think that I needed to think that way. And I do have a thank you, right? <laughs> so good. Uh, as a thank you, I'd like to offer uh, the first name of his new beer that he's going to brew, and it can be called Dreamcatcher because it'll taste like everybody's hopes and dreams that he's stolen to get exactly where the fuck he is. There you go. That's it, right? He's, he's, I'd be very bitter. He, on LinkedIn, and I'm, multiple people are sending this to me, he's launching championship beverages. Yep. President and CEO of championship beverages. I am literally have a dozen people sending me the screenshot of this here. Yeah. Thoughts on that? I don't, I, no. No. Okay. Because I'm, I'm just glad he'll be okay because I'll figure my shit out. I right? to totally get that. Yeah. Um, next steps for you, Laura? I don't know. Okay. You know, I do know, I don't know. I'm, I need to clean this mess up first. Um, I'll always be okay. I've always been a survivor. You know what I mean? Like, I, I beat all that statistics, the teen mom shit, the female chef shit. Right? Yeah. Uh, I will, I'm scrappy. I'll figure it out. You know what I mean? What's your, um, how old's your oldest daughter? 20. What's, what's your 20 year old daughter been saying through this? Uh, real naughty words. <laughs> <laughs> She's pissed. Yeah. Yeah. She's seen what I've gone through my whole life. And the reason I bring up your 20 year old versus your other, you have three kids. Because she's, she's an adult. Yeah. She's seen it. She's growing yeah. up in this, mm -hmm. right? In restaurants yeah. with you. She, that's worked why for, she worked for him at one that, point. Right. That's mm -hmm. why yeah. I'm bringing that up. Yeah. No, she's very upset. You know, I, I keep saying, don't let it, don't let this jade uh, your opinion on restaurants and in this industry, because that's, this isn't what it is, right? This is the ugliest part of it. And the part that needs to be eliminated from this business because it is it is it's soul crushing, right? Uh, I'm lucky I'm as strong as I am and as resilient as I am, or I wouldn't be trying to tell my story, right? Uh, I, I, this gives me the passion to come back better and stronger, but I, I just want to figure out what that is, right? It's going to be on my terms and like my uh, my new chapter. Do you know what I mean? I've, I've, I've gone through like three different chapters of myself since the pandemic and I've loved each and every one of them and I can't, really can't wait to see which one this will be. What are those right? three chapters? Um, losing the career, starting a restaurant, divorce, right? And now losing a, a business. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, I probably can't count. <laughs> Doesn't look good for me. <laughs> is the is yeah. the um, next chapter in restaurants? Yeah, I don't have anything. I don't can't do anything else, right? I can, I can, but I don't like it as much. Uh, this is not. I'm not jaded from this. This is where I'm not going to continue, right? Uh -huh. This just makes me fight harder for the working class, right? Fight harder for all of the restaurant workers because we are who runs it, right? It's not, you know, all these places were under the Champion Hospitality Group, right? But it wasn't that that made the space. It was the employees and the and the people that were in there running it every day that made everything so special about those places, right? Yeah. And it wasn't their fault that it got ripped away. Right. And you know, if I had, if this was a, a unique situation to Hunter and his testament for negligence in running a, an entire company, I wouldn't be the only one closed. I right. wouldn't have been the last one closed, right? Like, they'd be open and then I would, I'd be closed. Right. Um, Camila Eubanks, Washington, I agree with you. She says you will come back stronger. Laura, you're a phenomenal chef. Um, so, I mean, when you guys see the comments here, I mean, the siren page alone right now is, your supporters are out. I, I thank yeah. them, all of yeah. them, because they're the reason why I, I came to tell this story and they're the reason why I continue to have faith in, in in the restaurant businesses in this town, because we're all we're all good people, uh, albeit we're all different, right? Some people think of restaurant workers as grimy and whatever. Uh, we're just scrappy, right? We're used to being poor, 
we don't we don't need anything much more than that, right? right. Like we, I agreed to be poor my whole life, when I'm like, let's buy a restaurant. But I didn't, you know, I obviously didn't think it'd be like this. Tell us about the uh, tell us about the photo with the with the uh, middle finger. Oh salute. yeah, let's discuss this because it needs to be addressed. Um, I, if I offended you, I'm sorry. You're not as angry as me, right? Uh, I have been the bigger person for almost a year now. Mm -hmm. uh, it is my right and 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 my ability to choose whatever, however I want to express my feelings, and if you don't like them, keep scrolling, right? Because I saw all the keyboard warriors, I saw all of them, that, but granted, a lot of them didn't understand the story, but how, you know, that's so unprofessional. This whole fucking thing was unprofessional. So if that's what bothers you, then you are thinking about this the wrong way, right? Uh, I, I knew my grandma was gonna see that, right? It's nothing, you guys, are you guys surprised? I'm Laura Funner, right? My favorite, I have my <laughs> earrings say fuck. Yeah, right? right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fair. Like, yes, that is exactly what I needed to do. I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry about anything. I'm not sorry about you, sir. I'll never be sorry about that. I'll, I'll say that again in a heartbeat, right? Nobody else is going to call him out and make him, like, make him think about what he's done. I'll do it. Yeah. I don't care. I've, I've given up everything. I've lost everything. I've done, you know, uh, if this fight isn't, a, like, if my sacrifices with my children and my whole life throughout my year for this, for this kind of business uh, isn't justified by me fighting for myself and the right to be able to fight for the good fight for people, right, that don't feel like, what is it worth, yeah. right? If I can't show my kids I can sit here and cry and then come back even stronger the next time and do something even bigger and better because somebody did something to me and I didn't crumble. Right. That's what it's for. And will that right. um, next thing have any partners? I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. Um, this question was um, that, you know, sent in by a couple of folks. Put in perspective when you took over, mm -hmm. and 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 the feeling of um, we're going to take this from the ashes and making it to something special. Yep. And then till this week when it was closed down officially. Mm -hmm. I mean, because that is that is an array of emotions. Absolutely, mm -hmm. this whole two years has been, right? Uh, I don't even have the words to explain it, right? Uh, I'm going to use this word lightly because I am not personally defeated, but the whole situation is defeated, right? You, you, I've, I've realized a long time ago in life, you don't have control of a lot of aspects of your life, right? You fight what you can to control what you can, and, and your actions are what makes the difference and what makes who you are who you are. Uh, when I saw it coming out, like, I was so ecstatic. You guys saw it. I had my little half-naked... Italy, Italy picture. <laughs> like, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, I remember that photo. <laughs> like, I meant every, every ounce of that picture, right? It was yeah. so freeing and so relaxing to think, well, shit, I get to figure out if I'm going to fail on my own, right? And then to have things creep in and be like, it's, it's like you're slipping away even though it's still yours, yeah. right? It's a horrible feeling. And it is a horrible feeling to find, have to come to the decision to close the place because of something that you didn't, you didn't cause but you couldn't control, Right? Like if it was up to me, we've done the paperwork. If it was up to us and we hadn't had their interaction and, and what had happened since we opened, we'd be open still and we'd be okay. Right? It was just the... I think everyone understands. Mm -hmm. It was an insurmountable position. Yeah. yeah. And a, not only That's an insurmountable part, position, you know? but a position that you were again lied to of the level of insurmountableness. Yeah. Just be transparent and tell me how fucked I am. Right. right? Mm -hmm. like, because if you had the transparency yeah. and realized the position mm -hmm. you were in, you would have yeah. made alternative decisions. Absolutely. Is that fair? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so was, maybe that's the biggest um, aspect of disingenuous and or lying was that. Right. Yeah. Right. Right? Yeah, even at the end, it's, that's what it's I'm saying. already falling apart. Right. And you're still not being honest about it. Right. That's my point. Yeah, I don't understand that either. Like, I, I don't understand. Because I'm, but I'm that, not that was the opportunity. Either, right. Like that was that the opportunity person. for the, uh, mm -hmm. the conscious self awareness and the, um, the little bird on your shoulder or that voice in our head that says, do good. Yeah. That was mm -hmm. the time for it to come out right. and say, here's yeah. completely where we're at. Yep. Well, listen, at one point in the, the last, since Siren Open, we had our, not, not naming names or even their position, but we had meetings with somebody pretty frequently and they had confessed that their moral compass was broken because of champion. That's fucking huge, right? That, that means a lot. Yeah. yeah, that's like PTSD. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now I wanted to be like me too, but I'm not gonna do anything morally wrong, right? right? I knew what path I was on. Uh, I know I'm not everybody's cup of tea, I'm a cup of coffee, Yeah. right? Like yeah. I, it, it, it is what it is, I'm not like, but I'm not gonna 
bend over and do something just because everybody's doing it, right? Like, I'm not going to go do things that are, are against my morals. And I've, I've been very transparent what my morals are this entire time and how, how I feel about everything. So, Do you... How can we help? I mean, I, I mentioned know. I want to help. But uh, like we're doing a benefit next Wednesday at the restaurant, which is a cash only buy your bar out. I'll be honest why it's cash only. And it's only because I took every last penny that we had out of the account and out of the entire restaurant and divvied it up again with the staff. So I don't have any change to give you, right? So it's like pay, pay what you will, yeah. right? Um, it'll be next Wednesday night. I'm trying to line up people that want to do music for it, uh, but it's buy the bar out. Okay. Uh, that will help my staff, right? Uh, our beautiful, beautiful uh, microgreen vendor, Erica from Honeysuckle Farm, started a GoFundMe out there for me personally. Uh, that I obviously won't keep it all personally, right? Mm -hmm. That's just not the person that I am. Uh, I don't know how to help me. I don't know how to help myself yet, right? I know I'm handling it really well. I got to stay calm, cool, and collected and, and, and make smart decisions like I've always done. Right, and be really thoughtful about what's next and how to go and move forward. Right, I'm just not sure how to, how to help myself because I'm just still like bamboozled about what just happened. Yeah. Right, and, like it's stunning to sit here and be like, whew, and you wake up and you're like, whew, shit, it's still here. Yeah. <laughs> right, I don't know. Um, well, we, you know, we help anytime you want. Um, yeah. I mentioned the telephone idea, mm -hmm. we can do that. I mean, I'll right. just wait. For your direction, right? Um, I, I have seen the GoFundMe that um, Eric, is it Erica Cavanaugh yeah. yeah. has done. If you yeah. guys find Erica Cavanaugh, I think the GoFundMe link is being shared on the Siren page now by Erica. Please contribute to the GoFundMe. You know the the you know something to put in your crawl or the back of your head. Telethon, if you ever want to do yeah. it, we yeah. would happily do it. Um, I think. Yeah, the that's courage. something we'll, we'll discuss. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think the courage that you guys have shown to tell the story is important because it educates. Uh, at first, it papers the trail, and papering the trail in 2023 is what you find on Google. And then secondly, it offers an opportunity for people to learn from you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. and, and, and thirdly, it, it kind of puts in perspective the business practices that are being utilized by this particular individual, but it's not unique necessarily to this individual. Right. These business practices are common in some of restaurants. Mm -hmm. right. um, you know, so right. important to emphasize that. What are we missing here? What else needs I to be know. told? What else needs to be covered? I don't, I don't think much. I mean, I, I've covered what I would like to talk about, right? Okay. That, my, my explanation and reasoning why my restaurant needed to close, uh, my, dealings with a, my partner, right? Or former partner, I should say. Because uh, I don't really have any, I don't, I don't know what's next. I don't, it'll, I'll be okay though. I, like I always land on my feet somehow or another. Okay, so, okay, anything? Yeah, no, I think okay. it's, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm with her on that. It's uh, taking the weekend to breathe and then yeah. figuring out what we have to do next, get that done and then, you know, just take it in steps. Um, family, your family, how have they responded? Ah, uh, they're Circle still the wagons. Your, my mom hasn't shown up out there yet? Yeah. Well, she sent me a DM. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> legitimately. Did you send you the picture? She sent me a DM. Your mom said, said and thank you for the support. Um, she is, uh, Ruth Ferris is watching mm -hmm. the program right now. Um, I can tell that, uh, that, that Ruth loves you fiercely yeah. and forever, like yeah. all moms do. Yeah. I mean, have you... Put the family support in perspective. Yeah, I mean, my, from my ex-husband to like my brother and my well, some of my children. <laughs> One woman said, "Why do I care?" Yeah. <laughs> These young. So yeah, said, as part of being a teenager, I was asking probably, myself right? why he yeah, cared as well. Right? Eleven, yeah, that's yeah, eleven. Um, but no, it's just uh, you know they're all rallying behind me because they know that I put absolutely everything I had into that place and I created it and it was such a beautiful thing and and they know it was not all my doing and it it became out of my hands, you know. Uh, they're not angry about anything. I had borrowed money from my mother and father to open it, right? Uh, they said that they'd do it all over again. That's amazing. Right? I'm like, no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no that's because no. they love but you. They do, and I love yeah. them, right? Yeah. But I've never, I don't ask people for things. Right. I don't. I, I, I am who I am, and I, if I don't have it all, get an extra job, or I don't need it. Right. Right? Like, it, it just is what it is. I don't ask, I don't expect people to do my life for me, right? I, I, I mean, I'm very capable of doing it myself. 
I yeah. think this, uh, and we'll close on this, I don't think this is the last chapter. This is just the middle portion of the novel. Okay. And the yeah. novel is like yet to be written. And mm -hmm. this could be the, uh, you know, the, uh, the denouement, the falling action, the climax. I mean, we're, we're yeah. not even at these points yet. The future is incredibly bright for this tandem, for Laura and whatever you create. And if it's not Siren, I know whatever you do create is gonna be badass. Because that's what you do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you do it from Dumpling, you did it at Siren, you mm -hmm. did it at Dooners, you've come on the show previously, mm -hmm. you worked at some restaurants on West Main, yeah. right? Did some, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, <laughs> everywhere you've gone, yeah. you've made badass food that people have responded incredibly well to. Thank you. Um, and I know that's gonna happen again, and I can't wait to see, and I know the community's echoing this, what you do next. Yeah. This, uh, this might be the most beautiful disaster, right? Wow. I, I have no idea what's next, but that's kind of exciting. And Your and life is a hell of a movie script. It is, yes, yeah. It is. Have yeah, you thought about that? If I'm not scared, then there, there's, I'm not doing something right. You know, I feel like I'm not nervous about things. and I'm not, you know, So this is kind of a, an exciting... I thought COVID was a restart, like a re-jump, right? A reboot. Uh, this is exactly one, too. A much mm -hmm. dirtier one, right? Yeah. Much, much more to clean up from this one. But uh, it might be the most beautiful beautiful disaster and, and exactly what life was supposed to be for me. Respect. I have no idea and I'm just going to embrace it because what's my other option, right? There yeah. it is. Yeah. Um, that's a good way to close. Ladies, thank you very much yeah. for joining yeah. us. Thank, thank you, you, Charlottesville. I, we are, the, so yeah, never having so support is not unnoticed and not not truly appreciated. Uh, I, I keep fighting the hard fight for all of everybody, right? Because if, uh, if, if everybody listens to me, and I don't, still don't know why after all these years they do, I can help be the voice because I, I'll fight the good fight forever. Well, I, yeah. think, I think why they do and respond to you is because you're real. Yeah. yeah. Like this is yeah. what you, you is all what the you time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. is yeah. her literally yeah. every day. It's yeah. exhausting. And, well, I don't think, it, I mean, I think it's, you know, maybe I don't spend as much time around you <laughs> as others here, but I think it's, it's um, authentic and people yes. like authentic. Yeah. yeah. There's no other reason to be anything else. Yeah, she's authentic. This is great. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. I, so many folks are saying they're glad you, sh you share the story. Um, Laura Foner, guys, um, yeah. it is a redemption story waiting to be told. And yeah. when it is told, we will support her and rally around her by the tens of thousands. Yeah, absolutely. We'll close on that note. For Judah Wickower, for Aaron, for Laura, my name is Jerry Miller, and it's the I Love Seville Show. Thank you for joining us, and take care.